So now that we've covered the non-vascular bryophyte plants, the obvious shift now will be to look at the vascular plants. And that's what we'll do in the next two flowcharts. We'll entitle the first one, Vascular Plants 1. So we talked about vascular plants briefly when we described the origin and diversification of land plants. What we're going to be doing now is looking at their success, at their dominance in more detail. First and foremost, we have to premise our knowledge on the idea that vascular plants were a bit after our bryophyte, let's their bryophyte ancestors. Um, essentially what we see in the fossil record is that the earliest fossils uh, of these vascular-like plants uh, date to about 425 million years ago. Date to about 425 MYA from million years ago. But what's happened is over the course of 425 million years, what you have is though the vascular plants developed after the bryophytes and the bryophytes got their head start, even though they're non-vascular, what happens today is that the vascular plants are indeed the most dominant form of plants today. And when we say dominant, we mean most advanced and most successful in that same right. That they are the most complex and they have the most uh, characteristics of success as described by dom their dominant capabilities uh, compared to their, uh, you know, any other non-vascular plants. And we'll see why in just a second. So first what we'll do is uh, look at this, we've established this idea that they're, they're kind of old, 425 million years ago, and it took them a long time to become dominant today. Why did they become dominant today? Well, that's because of uh, several of their main traits, and we'll cover the main traits in the next two videos. First main trait to understand is the fact that we have a bit of a switch in terms of the alternation of generations, and this is something that's always sort of asked about uh, for students, to make sure that they understand the switch. And the switch is simple. What has happened now is the fact that in vascular plants, the sporophyte, the sporophyte, which is diploid, this sporophyte is now the dominant life cycle stage, is equal to dominant, D-O-M, for dominant life cycle stage. And if we remember, plants undergo alternation of generations. They basically have this choice of sporophyte versus gametophyte depending on the environment. Right now, I'm telling you that vascular plants have made the other choice as compared to their gametophyte, bryophyte ancestors. And that is sporophyte. They are diploid as the dominant life cycle stage. And we'll see why in just a second. Now, in addition, vascular plants are vascular. That means that they have some sort of way to transport material in a much more capable, much more advanced, much more efficient manner than their non-vascular counterparts. And that is all due to specialization and differentiation of cells, which eventually lead to the development and evolution of their characteristic vascular tissues. And that's what we'll talk about for the rest of this video. What is vascular tissue and how does it allow for success? Now the first type of vascular tissue to absolutely understand is the idea of xylem. X-Y-L-E-M is xylem. Many people have heard of xylem and phloem, which is the other one, before, but don't really understand why this is going to lead to the great success of vascular plants. And I'll try to explain that for you. First and foremost, xylem is going to be used to do the following. Xylem conducts which means it carries and, and travels H2O and other small minerals throughout the plant, okay? When we say conducts, we mean it takes it from one point and brings it to another in one swoop and one continuous manner. It's like the conduction of electricity. Same idea here. We're conducting, we're taking H2O and letting it travel throughout the plant along with some dissolved minerals as well. Now, what's important about the xylem to understand is that its function is entirely related to its structure. Structure and function in bio always come together. And this is because xylem uses something known as a lignin polymer lignin polymer. This is the main characteristic that allows a xylem to be a xylem, to be successful in carrying water and minerals throughout the plant. This lignin polymer is going to be crucial because it strengthens, it strengthens the cell walls, it strengthens the cell walls of H2O conducting cells. 
So those cells that are making H2L travel throughout the plant, they have to tra make this H2L travel throughout the cell first and then throughout the cell walls of each individual cell. So we have to go from cell to another cell to another cell to another cell all the way to the top of the plant, right? But in order to do that, we need a strong structure within the cell wall, the ends of the cells that are doing a lot of this transfer of water. And that strong structure is thanks to the lignin polymer, which strengthens the cell walls of H2O conducting cells. Okay, so these cells aren't going to just explode because of all this water transfer that's happening. They'll be strong and sturdy because of lignin that's within their cell walls. In addition, lignin is going to allow, because it's so strong and structural, it allows plants to grow tall and it also allows plants to have this uh, support. They grow tall and they have a good amount of support. This is going to be one of the biggest moments of success for these plants because growing tall and having support gives you the a, a huge, a huge, and no pun intended here, a huge competitive advantage because you are tall because you have support. And I'll explain. Competitive, uh, I want to make sure I spell this right, competitive advantage, ADV for advantage, a huge competitive advantage. And that's the fact that you, let's look at our bryophyte ancestors or the plant's bryophyte ancestors. What did I say about them? They're small, they're limited, they don't have true sort of any characteristic plant structures, but they still have the capability of being a plant, right? Of being on land. Over here, what we have is the fact that this tall plant, this plant with support, this plant with xylem and phloem, which we'll get to in just a second, is able to absolutely outcompete, absolutely outcompete any shorter plants for one of the most important resources on planet Earth. Not water, not sugar, but actually the source of all energetic transformations on planet Earth. Outcompete shorter plants for light. Light is key here. And we know that light is key because this is the start of all photosynthetic processes. And plants are characterized by photosynthesis. If you can do photosynthesis, if you can get light at a better rate than somebody else, you can do photosynthesis at a better rate than somebody else. Thus, you can survive at a better rate than somebody else. You can outcompete. You can be more naturally selected, let's say, more advantageous to your environment if you can grab the light at a better rate. What better way to grab light than to just be tall just to have first dibs on all of the sun's photons that's exactly what happens here in addition not only that do we get this extension of light but we also get another key advantage and that's the fact that the spores themselves because this is a sporophyte dominant structure spores will be produced spores will be released spores actually disperse even further than any other type of spore producing structure like the bryophytes. They have a spore producing structure it's called the sporophyte, but these spores are dispersed further because they're higher up in the air. They catch more wind. They catch the wind first and thus they can move further. Essentially, these two advantages, this advantage is all about surviving. This advantage is all about reproducing. And what is life? Life is survival and reproduction. Look what the vascular tissue has allowed for these plants to do, whether it was direct or indirect, doesn't matter. This is a great competitive advantage to have vascular tissue in the form of xylem, which consists of a lignin poly polymer, which allows for lots of tall plants and lots of supported plants. So that's our xylem story. In addition to the xylem, we also have a structure that you should know of known as the phloem. All of these will be explained in a little bit more detail when we get to plant anatomy, but the phloem for right now, just understand it as the thing that conducts, it travels and takes up sugars, things that are very important to cells um, uh, that are respiring because remember plant cells photosynthesis and also do cell respiration. Don't forget that. So you need to bring these sugars, this glucose molecules that are made in the plant throughout every, throughout every cell that needs it. So it conducts sugars. Plants also need their protein so it conducts amino acids and also other basic organic products that are made throughout the plant and absorbed from the uh, ground, the soil. Okay, so that's our xylem, our phloem. Uh, other things that most people notice about plants is that plants have roots, right? A lot of people know that plants have roots, and it's very obvious for their uh, function. Their function is mainly in absorption of H2O plus minerals. And where are, is this H2O and minerals coming from? And that is, of course, uh, from soil. Okay, 
this is the idea of increasing your surface area. You have your extensions through, throughout the ground, throughout the roots, allows you to gain more access to H2O and minerals. And you can take that H2O, you can take those minerals, bring them throughout the cell using, utilizing a xylem, do some photosynthesis with that competitive light advantage, and then take all of that sugar that you made with photosynthesis and let it travel throughout the plant with your phloem, all starting at the root level, of course. And roots also are going to be nice anchors. They anchor plant as well. Anchor plants. Okay, another structure most people know about plants is the fact that plants have leaves. And leaves are an important vascular tissue, actually, because leaves are going to be a characteristic that increases the surface area of the plant body as a whole. What you notice about leaves is that they extend the plant even further. And if you extend the plant even further on the left and the right and on the top, then you're extending the reach of light, right? You're getting more light. Essentially, the leaves become the primary location. One degree sign is primary. Primary location of that magical process, that process that we all know and love, photosynthesis. And if you can do photosynthesis well, if you can grow tall and grow expansive leaves, think of the biggest trees in the world. They have the most leaves. They have the tallest structures. That's because of this vascular tissue origin. That vascular tissue competitive advantage that they have allows them to increase their surface area, get this photosynthesis going, and allow for a great amount of overall, let's say, success within the plant body as a whole. Finally, the last type of vascular tissue and structure we'll cover in this video are the sporophylls. Sporophylls are going to be modified leaves possessed by the vascular tissues. The vascular plants have this type of structure. Sporophylls are modified leaves. More specifically, sporophylls are going to be the structures that uh, obviously bear the sporangia. And remember, the sporangia is where spores are produced. And remember, a sporophyte produces spores via meiosis so that those spores, those haploid spores, can be dispersed right over here, spores disperse. And so, in order for them to disperse, you have a specific part of the leaf structure known as the sporophyll that bears that sporangia structure that we talked about already. Take, for example, the ferns. Okay, ferns are a very old example, one of the oldest vascular plants. These ferns uh, are going to produce structures uh, known as sori or sori. I'm not pr particularly sure about the pronunciation there, uh, but they produce this structure Sori or sori, whatever it may be, are essentially clusters of sporangia. So they're clusters of spore-producing areas, and they are specifically on the underside of the sporophylls, on the underside of these leaves, so that you can get the most wind, so that you can get the most capability of dispersal, so that you can survive and reproduce, specifically reproduce in this situation. So I hope through this you can see just how important it is to be vascular and just how much vascular tissue allows you to become the most dominant form of plants today, specifically in regards to the fact that you can grow tall, grow strong, and outcompete any of your non-vascular, uh, any of your non-vascular, let's say, foes or competitors. And that covers our first look at vascular plants. We'll talk about the reproduction mechanisms a little bit more in the next video.